Alex, what made you stick with fencing over all other sports offered to you at the time when you first started out as a junior? When I started fencing at the age of nine in school, my mother signed me up for, uh, for a class and I really enjoyed it. My ability to play with the sword was quite intense, moving up and down. I played other sports like football, tennis, cricket, but I, I found that I really enjoyed this one the most and that's why I stuck with it. And the foil, instead of Epe or Sabre, why the foil? Well, the foil is twofold really. First of all, it's, it's really physical, really intense, you're moving up and down. I like the athletic aspect of it. Uh, the second aspect is we say that it's like a physical chess, so it's, uh, yeah. there's, a, there's a very large mental aspect to it. So you've got to really work out your opponent and I really uh, enjoy this side of it as well. And so, so far in your career, what's the most memorable moment? Well, I've had a couple most recently, but I'd say the one which really triggered my uh, my dreams of, of going to the Olympics and so forth was when I was a junior, I won the Under-20 World Cup in Austria, and it was the first time that I you know, applied myself to, such a, to, to win the competition uh, on the international scene, and it gave me the impetus and the motivation to know that show that I can do it on the international level, and you know, give me the motivation for training in order to keep going and and uh, trying to achieve my aspiration of going to the Olympic Games. And the, the, was that one of your toughest fights or what was your, your toughest fight? Did you have a particular opponent that you faced that you know you felt you did really well against? Yeah, I, I'd say this season uh, it was probably that situation occurred as I, I fenced in uh, La Coruña in the, in the knockout rounds. So the four times world champion uh, Peter Jopic from Germany yeah. and uh, you know, of course I was the underdog. Um, someone of his stature and I was able to beat him 15-10 so this was a real kind of watershed moment for me the ability to beat uh, someone with such high technical ability gave me the confidence that you know I can really make it at the senior level and again so it's kind of a breakthrough for you yeah definitely so it's a breakthrough you know, to show that you know, with my skills I can beat these guys and, and it gave me, it's given me the confidence for the rest of the season that's great and then so what, what are your biggest hurdles that you've overcome um, you know, to get where you are now? Have you had any particular bad injuries? Or? Yeah, well, I think, I think everyone, whether it be fencing or in any sphere of life, um, has, has uh, hurdles to overcome. And, uh, you know, I've had injuries. I've also had to, to balance throughout my academic career in, in school, uh, my, my work and my fencing. Um, but I think, you know, these hurdles, they make you strong to be able to come through and I think that's a key, that's a key asset for, to reach the top in anything, especially in fencing, is to have that desire and you know, the desire to always improve and to learn from your mistakes. And what, what do you find are the key traits to make you a successful fencer? I think, well, everyone always talks about talent. Talent's important, but I think hard work and discipline is, is paramount uh, because you, know, you can have you can have the talent, but if you're not able to realise it, then you won't reach the top. And it's 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 really about, especially in fencing, you've got to really you know learn quicker than your opponent. Not just in the match, but in your training and the way you approach your fencing. So I think that's also a key trait is to be a quick learner. And if you learn the quickest, I think you reach the top. And you you mentioned discipline as one of the traits. Do you have to balance? have a work-life balance at all between fencing and anything else that you're doing? Yes, yeah, so I'm currently reading uh, classics at UCL, so um, I'm there full-time and also full-time fencer, so it's, uh, it's a hard balance, but I, I think you know when you really have a desire to succeed in something, you're willing to make sacrifice and sacrifices in other aspects of your life, and uh, that, that's what I've done with this. And that's the only way you can bear the fruits of your labour. And you say, so you're at university and you're a full-time friend, so, to, so do you have any free time? And what do you do in that free time? Yes, yeah, so well, I think it's also key to make sure that you do uh, make some time socially to, to relax. This is important because if you're constantly you know, battling, you know, putting all the efforts into fencing training and the work, it can, it can get you down. So I always make sure that I have a, you know, an hour or a couple of hours each day just to relax, see some friends, uh, you know, maybe play some cards. You know, really socialise is important, spend some time with my family. I think it's important also to, to make sure that you have some time away mm -hmm. to 
give your mind a rest and allow it to reflect. Do you have any other sports that you play as a release? You mentioned tennis um, and cricket. Fortunately, we're not, a, we're not allowed to play sports, so I can't comment if I play <laughs> sports. But no, I mean, I, I used to, I used to really, I like table tennis. We play a lot of table tennis with the guys as well. Um, and not much I, contact in that. No, not much contact. I used to love playing football, but of course, it's contact sports. Yeah. And just, so mostly table tennis. And out of your your G, GB teammates, who do you most dislike fencing? It's a funny one because uh, the one I most dislike is also the one I like the most. I just have to say Richard Cruz. Mm -hmm. I like the most and I dislike the most. I like fencing him and like to beat him and I dislike losing to him. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so, uh, extremes. Yes, yes. But I mean, it's, it, it's good fun. He always pushes me 100% and uh, I have to be 100% focused not only um, physically but also tactically, which is what you, what you have to be when you're fencing in the competition, so it's great practice. So I really enjoy sparring with them every day in the National Training Centre in Newburgh. It's great to have that on site all the time, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Uh, um, if, you, uh, if you weren't a fencer, what would you be? You mentioned university, but yeah. you know, do you have any other aspirations as well, academically or you know, outside of fencing? Yes, well, I think, well, if I hadn't chosen fencing as a path, I would have chosen another sport to do now because I'm really yeah. passionate about sports, football, mm -hmm. tennis. But uh, of course I'm studying classic SUSE and I hope to, uh, I have aspirations to, to go into law later, later on, so that's something I'd like to do much later on. But only after I get some shiny metal from the Olympic Games. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously you're, you're part of the GB team and you, you get to travel a lot. What, what are the most exotic places that you've been to? I think um, that's one of the great um, perks of being on the British fencing team is the ability to travel the world, experience some different cultures. Uh, I would say Korea was a real eye opener uh, mm -hmm. because the culture is just so different to here. And, uh, London's very multicultural, but you, know, you can only really experience the, uh, other people's cultures in its, in, in its entirety by actually going to the, to the country and experiencing it with the food, the people. Yeah. So Korea was really interesting, very different. Also, I've been to Azerbaijan, uh, Baku. Um, the Windy City. Windy City. So that was very interesting as well to see that different culture. And I think it's interesting, fencing has allowed me to travel to places where you wouldn't usually go. It's the stereotypical tourist um, hotspots. So again, that's good. It's allowed me to broaden my horizons and uh, make, make, allow me to become a much more open-minded person. Definitely. And then just focusing back on tonight's match against Austria, um, how do you think the, the GB team are going to fare? I think the GB, what are the big challenges for you? I think we have some very strong players in this GB team. Uh, we just came back last week from uh, the World, uh, World Cup in Bonn in Germany where we finished the week in third, beating Russia and Japan. Unfortunately losing to China by one hit in the semi-final. But we won the third place playoff. So we've got very good momentum, uh, a very good team ethos and team ethic. Uh, we've all got the same goals are you going to the Olympics. And I think uh, the Australians are really going to feel the heat tonight. That's so, great. 